evening. Come on in. Come on in. Let's take our songbooks out. Page number 34. Page number 34 in our songbooks. Once you found it, let's all stand. Sing it there on that first church. I care not today what the morrow may bring, if shadow or sunshine or rain. The Lord I know ruleth for everything, and all of my worry is vain. Living by faith in Jesus above, trusting, confide. Obscuring the brightness of life. I'm never alarmed at the overcast skies. The master looks on at the strife. Living my faith in Jesus above. Trusting, confiding in his great love. From all harm saved. shall live by faith. And as that verse is written, there is a lot of fear in that. Because living by faith does not mean that we have comfort in the way that we live. Living by faith does not mean that we are, are always sure of the way we, we are to live. Living by faith consistently and regularly will pull us out of our comfort zone and will cause us, more often than not, to question everything we do so that we can trust God. That is a scary, scary thought. But you know what? The more that you begin to live by faith, the more you begin to realize that Jesus has always got you. And uh, that, that's, that's something that you can't teach. That's something that you can't preach. That's something that you must learn by yourself. And uh, that's, that's the, the hardest part about living by faith. But I'm so glad that you're here tonight. Thank you for those watching online. I'm um, looking forward to uh, getting into the service here tonight, looking forward to gaining something uh, from the music, the, the quiz, the uh, prayer page, the study, and leaving here just blessed. Thank you so much for uh, being here tonight. Let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you now for the opportunity to be in your house. Thank you for uh, being in a church that has heat on a chilly day here where you have uh, allowed the winds to blow mightily. Lord, I thank you so much that we can be in an indoor uh, uh, building with good heat and to be able to enjoy a time in your house. Lord, I pray that uh, as we sing, may we sing with our whole heart. I pray that uh, uh, as we go over these prayer requests, may we make them our own and bear one another's burdens. And Lord, when the, the word of God is being preached, Lord, I pray that you would work within our hearts. We love you now and thank you so much for all that you've done in your holy name. Amen. Thank you so much. You may be seated. Take your psalm books again, please, church. We're going to sing 308, 308, our best. 308. We'll sing it together. On that first, let's sing it. Here. The master's call, give me thy best. For be it great or small, that is his test. To then the best you can, not for reward.
second. Wait not for men to laud, heed not their slight. Winning the smile of God brings in delight. Aiding the good and true, there goes on blessed. Let's take a look at our prayer page here for tonight. And uh, uh, I don't have them highlighted here, but if we could, let's be in prayer for 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Uh, that's the Ping family. They're uh, uh, traveling right now, and uh, they're going to uh, go pick up uh, Mrs. Ping's dad. And then from there, they're going to go to see the Ark Encounter. And then they're, then they're going to Florida to go see Brother and Mrs. Uh, uh, um, Brother Ping's uh, mom and dad. And so uh, they're, they're on that trip there. We're praying for them. Um, and I know we'll, we'll miss them for the, these next couple weeks. We got uh, uh, Brother Anthony's going to be taking over the class while they're gone. And uh, that's exciting. And so uh, praise God for that. But let's keep them in prayer. Number 16, soul winning. Uh, this Saturday, barring rain, uh, 10 o'clock, we'll be here in our spots. I, 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 I want our church to be faithful and diligent to see souls saved. And uh, 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 that's a personal thing, but also as a church, corporately, we need to be faithful in, in giving out the gospel. And so hopefully you'll be able to be a part of that. And then number 18, we consistently pray for new workers and new members that God would begin to uh, bring in new people and uh, uh, build, build the church. Uh, we don't build the church for the sake of numbers. Uh, this church can blow it up and have three, four, five hundred people in the church. And can I tell you something? It can be a weak church. Big numbers do not mean strong church. And I think we, we get that confused a lot in the modern day age. We, we confuse the quantity with the quality. And that, that is a, a major problem. Now that being said, you can have both. But I'd rather choose the quality over the quantity. And uh, that's so important. And, and so uh, let's keep that in mind as we continue to pray that God would build his church. Number 22, let's continue to pray for Miss Necca and uh, her mom coming uh, by the end of March. 
Number 23, let's pray for Brother Jude's health and job security there. Number 24, Brother Romy and his health. And I know he's got an angiogram. I think it just had it, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but let's continue to be in prayer for him. Number 28, Brother Tony, talked to him today, and uh, he is uh, still on the mend, got, got some pain that he's working through, but let's continue to be in prayer for him. Number uh, 44, unsafe family and friends. Uh, if I could, let's, I know I talked about us being soul winners, but think about someone in your family that needs Christ. Is there, is there, in fact, let me just ask the question, is, does your family have anyone that you believe needs to be saved? Is that anyone? All right, we've got the majority. Uh, I, praise God, the last person in my family um, that I knew of that was unsaved, uh, they got saved my senior year of college. Uh, so as far as I know, within my family and my immediate extended family, uh, the, they've all made a uh, profession of faith. And I, I thank God for that. But there are others in my extended family, further extended family, that I know need Christ. And uh, let's continually be thinking about our families and, and being a, number one, being a good testimony. Because here's, here's the thing. You want to know why a lot of our family won't listen to us when it comes to spiritual matters? Because we don't live it outside of the church. And because we don't live it outside of the church, when we do bring up spiritual matters, they go, mm, fake. I don't want that. And uh, uh, if, we, if we lived what we... And I'm not saying we're, we need to be perfect, but if we lived the same way we are in church, the way we are at home and, and at work and uh, in play and whatever we do, uh, I tell you what, number one, life will be a lot easier for you. But number two, uh, you'd be able to see as your testimony would begin to speak. And so let's keep that in mind there. Number 52, our president and his family, whether you voted for him or you didn't, always be in prayer for your government officials. Always. I, I, uh, about once a month, I let our mayor know I'm praying, I'm praying for her. I, uh, uh, some of our assemblymen, uh, I've gotten to know. I'll occasionally send them an email. Now, when I say gotten to know them, that doesn't necessarily mean they know me that well. <laughs> but uh, occasionally I'll send them an email, and uh, they're gracious enough to reply back and say thank you, appreciate it. Um, uh, they're our governor, which I am not necessarily the biggest fan of, but our governor, I have been able to reach out to his office, let him know that I'm praying for him, and uh, uh, he has not returned any of those. But uh, I, I tell you what, we need to consistently be in prayer for our government officials. Um, it, it, that, that's so very important. Then uh, uh, let, let's keep in mind number 66, uh, Joshua Jigo with his work situation. Our missionary of the uh, week is the Bordell family serving in Costa Rica. Our college student of the week, Brother Daniel Flores. And then this Saturday at 3 p.m., we have a men's meeting. And gentlemen, I hope you come ready for that. Uh, looking forward to uh, spending some time with you. And uh, uh, I know uh, we've got we've got some some things that we're, we got planned here. So. Please be there at 3 p.m. for that. And then you see all the, all the many unspoken requests there. Any prayer requests or praise we can add to this sheet? Any prayer requests or praise? Well, let me check here, see if we have any on, online. Uh, no, I think we're good. Any prayer requests or praise within the auditorium, Brother Anthony? That's right. If we can be in, if we can be in prayer for... Uh, um, Brother Anthony's cousin Mikey with cancer and uh, he's, it's, it's in his mouth and and so uh, uh, so far nothing has spread uh, however um, let's pray that it stays that way and uh, they're able to get get everything uh, rooted out and everything there but let's be in prayer for that any others prayer request or praise, praise yes sir
and now there was a massive tree, and uh, I think Brother Damon, you were telling me about it. Massive tree fell uh, over off Walnut, and uh, um, and those winds were no joke. And uh, today they were very cold. Uh, they weren't as strong as they were yesterday, but to, they were very cold. And so, yeah, let's continue to be in prayer for that. Any others here tonight? Any others? Yes, Mrs. Ojigo. Absolutely, absolutely. Every year we try to be a part of that, supporting that, and uh, um, I, I do appreciate that. Uh, we had, uh, out of all three of our uh, kids, uh, when we went in for a doctor's check, the first question that was asked that once they, we found out that we were expecting was, is this something that you want to keep? That was one of the, all three. That was the first question. They were all three healthy, all three uh, um uh, well, we won't, yeah, all three of them were wanted, <laughs> um, and, uh, uh, but <laughs> I was scared on the first one, but all three, all three were uh, definitely wanted, but I tell you what, I couldn't believe that the question was even posed, and uh, uh, it is, it is an unbelievable thing, and so uh, I, th I thank God for Mrs. Ojigo and, and being able to, to do that, and the, the people there, at Real Options, they're just a, they're a good organization that's there. And so uh, let's, if you could, if you want to help, that'll be in the back uh, table there. Any others here tonight? All right, Brother Mark, I'll have you come on up and uh, administer the Bible let's quiz. Let's all stand together. Oh, oh sorry, Pastor. Oh, the oh, Bible no, quiz no. could not be printed tonight. Sorry. I did do my job, and I sent it to you. The, the, the administration uh, warns me that it was too good of a quiz. <laughs> to do this week, but we'll save it for next week. Uh, 539, let's take our songbooks, stand together, stretch our legs there, all that thrills my soul. 539. We'll sing it together on that first. Who can cheer the heart like Jesus? By his presence all divine, true and tender, pure and bright. so freely given, grace of God beyond degree, mercy higher than the heaven, deeper than the deepest sea.
I see. Good sing. You may be seated. Amen. That's a good song right there. And uh, tell you what, that that song is going to tie perfectly into the message here tonight. If you have your Bible, would you go with, with me to Micah chapter number 7? Micah chapter number 7. Micah chapter 7. After tonight, we round out another book in the Minor Prophets. And that's exciting. We'll be, uh, uh, next week, we'll be looking at the book of Nahum. And uh, I, I tell you what, uh, that is... Just to be able to say that we're 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 going through these these minor prophet books, that to be able to say that we've got uh, maybe not a full grasp, but we've got an understanding of what these books are talking about. Uh, I guarantee most Christians do not, and uh, um, and I'm not saying that so that we could be uh, braggadocious or that we could. Uh, we can feel like we're better. Uh, that, that, that is not the case. But I think it's important for us to know our Bible in the fullest way possible. There is too many, too many Christians that allow superficiality to infect their faith to the point where they're not able to stand for what they believe in because they don't know what they truly believe in. And... I think it's important for us to, 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 to get to know our Bible in such a way that would cause us to be able to have a stance in our faith, a stance in our doctrine. And so um, let's continue to press on as we study our Bible. Micah chapter number 7, uh, the book of Micah is a book uh, with the theme of judgment and hope. God brings judgment to those who are against His will. But God brings hope to those who are turning to His will. And any time that God's judgment is released, there will always be a ray of hope. Always. But there is one one time, I should say, that that hope will be gone. And that will be when when, uh, it's our time to die. At that point, there is no chance to change. There is no chance for hope. At that point, it's done. Otherwise, God always brings hope. Uh, Micah... His name means who is like the eternal. And that that is an important thought to keep in mind because so often we we look at our God, we look at our faith, and we push it off and we think that there is a better way or there is a better system or I I, I, want to live my life in in a better manner. And when we do that, we miss out on what God had planned for our life. Uh, last year, I was doing some work at the church, and uh, I am not, I've, I've, I've said this many times, I'm not the handiest of guys. I, I, I know I've, I've got multiple talents. God's blessed me with a lot of talents. But when it comes to being a handyman, I'm out of my depth. I was I was trying to fix something, and Brother Ping came by, and uh, uh, as I was trying to try to get it fixed, Brother Ping goes, "Hey, what you doing?" I said, I'm trying to fix this. There was a, a issue in the in the back area. I was, I'm trying to fix it. He looked at me. He goes, "With that tool?" I went, well, yeah. He goes, "You realize that's not what it's used for, right?" No. He goes, if you just use this tool, it'll go faster. I remember I picked up that tool and 
Immediately. It was done in like a couple minutes. It's interesting that when we have the right tools in hand, the job gets done. And understanding that our God, who is like our God, is an understanding of the purpose in which we were created. We can't use a hammer to a screw just because it looks like a nail. A screwdriver works so much better. And when we use that tool in its correct manner, we get better results. Can you nail in a screw with a hammer? Yes. Will it be a mess? Yes. But if you use the right tool, that ha it, ha it had a specific purpose for it, the job will get done in the best way possible. So chapter 1, we begin to, we begin to see as, as Micah uh, was putting the people on trial because God was putting the people on trial. Chapter 2, he begins to, uh, uh, to talk about the oppress, oppressive leaders that were beginning to bring down the people and cause the people to um, harm each other for the sake of material uh, gain. We find... Uh, as we continue to move on, that we, we find uh, in, in chapter 3, as God begins to rebuke the false prophets, that would make people feel like everything's okay, that there's, there's, no, real, there's, there's no real worry to, to, to have any sense of urgency. Chapter 4, we see as... He begins to show uh, the, the way of God. Chapter 5, we see the marker against the rulers of Israel. Chapter 6, we found the courtroom. As we move to chapter 7, Micah starts off in verse number one, says, Woe is me, for I, am a man, for I am as when they had gathered the summer fruits as the grape leanings of the vintage. There is no cluster to eat. My soul desired first ripe fruit. He says, I am like a guy who went out to get the, the, the summer fruit. I went to go get some grapes or uh, uh, just uh, s some something sweet to, that, that's going to give me that, that, that nice uh, feeling in the, in the heat of, of life. You know, when, when, when things are uh, starting to heat up in the summer, and maybe you say, I could really go for a, some watermelon. Oh, man, I love watermelon. Brother Damon's come here a few times, and he's seen me. I, I, I'll have a whole watermelon. I'll cut that thing in half, and I just take a spoon right to the middle of it and I will devour the whole thing. I love it. it. It it refreshes me. It makes me feel good and it is so so tasty. But he's like that guy that's going to go gather the summer fruit <clears throat> and when he goes to the vine there's nothing there. He's left empty. He says, the good man is perished out of the earth, and there is none upright among men. They all lie, wait for blood. They hunt every man, his brother, with a net. He's saying, I, 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 look, I look at the state of man, and all I see is sinners. All I see are wicked people. He says in verse number three that they may do evil with both hands earnestly. You notice they're, they're not seeking to do good with both hands earnestly. The Bible says whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with all thy might. Rather than doing it for the Lord, they're finding evil and saying, oh man, 
I'm looking forward to doing this. And they do it with all their might. Isn't it interesting? We're so quick to do evil with all our might, but when it comes to the things of God, it becomes a, uh, if I have energy, if I have time, if I feel like it. It says that the prince asketh and the judge asketh for reward and the great man he uttereth his mischievous desire so they wrap it up. He says, you know what they're they're really looking for? What can I get out of it? What can I get from doing kind things, good things? You want to know why churches struggle? Because people say, well, what what do I get out of it? Oh, well, I really don't want to do that because, I mean, what, what, what am I getting from it? You say, Pastor, that's not, the, that's not the way. It's absolutely the way. If, if there was, if, if we got paid to serve within the church, people would probably be a little more faithful. And I say a little. If they got more recognition, oh, they'd be a little bit more faithful. But can I tell you something? None of those things would keep you faithful. And here he's saying, they're so caught up in what they can gain. Verse number four, the best of them is as a briar. You know what he's saying? The best of, a, of men are thorns. The best of, uh, uh, of us, the, the, the most, the, the ones that we look to and go, that's got to be a good guy. Can I tell you something? At best, they're prickly. At best, they're going to poke you. At best, they're looking for their own reward. He says, the most upright is sharper than a thorn hedge. The day of the watchman and the visitation cometh. Now uh, Now shall be their perplexity. You know what he's saying here? And I find this interesting. He says, the best of these people, the best of God's people, by the way, he's not talking about all the heathen nations. He's saying the best of God's people are, they, they seek for reward. They won't serve you, God, unless they can get anything out of it. He says they won't serve you, God, unless it, they feel like they got the game. Uh, And the best of them are prickly and and, and you can't get too close to. Uh, In the front of this uh, church, there is a, uh, that that big tree that's over there. When we first got there, it was coming over the roof. And uh, myself and Justin Lamar, one day, uh, uh, we we got a... um, our uh, a chainsaw, and we were we were going to cut that whole thing down. And uh, uh, so I, I I had him. He was chopping along the sides, and I took the chainsaw to the bottom, and uh, it was slowly starting to fall over. And then something happened. As this tree began to fall over, I went to go grab the branch, and the thorns went straight through my hand. The thorns on that bush are 
are incredible. Uh, Brother Damon, you've, you've uh, taken a couple thorns from that bush as well. That bush is deadly. Immediately, uh, uh, Justin, he was, he was underneath the, the, the tree there, and I said, hey, get away, get away. This tree's going to fall over. I didn't want the tree falling on him with all those thorns. And so we had to be careful, and we had to keep our distance as the tree fell over. And then I didn't know what to do as far as uh, 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 getting it thrown away, so I called uh, the, the, the junk haul guy and had him come. And uh, uh, he came by, and, and, and he chopped up the tree and everything. And as he was chopping up the, the tree, he, he had these the thick gloves on, and the thorns were going through the thick gloves. He goes, man, this tree is, this is something else. And after he packed it all away, he didn't, he didn't say, I'm going to charge you more because of the thorn, nothing like that. I tipped him uh, very well because I know that was a job and a half. But you know what he said? He's like, I wouldn't want to be anywhere near that tree. If the best of men are thorns or a thorn hedge, I don't think God wants to be anywhere near that tree. And unfortunately, we think ourselves to be okay, and yet we are just thorns, and God's going, no. I want nothing to do with you. And he says, and this self-confidence that man has in his sin, that he is willing to, to, to earnestly with both hands jump towards sin. You know what he says? He says, this is a self-confidence in them. And at one point, they will feel, and here's the word, perplexed. They will find confusion in life. Why are they going to find confusion? Because their sin has, has isolated them from God. Their sin has made them an island to themselves. Nobody wants to be around that. Our sin destroys relationships. Our sin destroys our relationship with God. It destroys our relationship with people. It destroys our relationship with ourselves. Oh, well, pastor, you're, that's, that's just preacher talk. Oh, what's verse 5 say? Trust ye not in a friend. Put ye not confidence in a guide. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. For the son dishonoreth the father, the daughter rises up against her mother, the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies are the men of his own house. Do you want to know what happens? Sin begins to creep into our lives. We allow idolatry and we allow our own desires and our own gain ultimately because we're seeking for what's going to make us happy. What happens is we seek to make ourselves happy and in order to do that we have to push everyone else away. And it starts with God. Why does it start with God? It starts with God because the Bible says that uh, we are to seek first the kingdom of God. Right? But we can't seek first the kingdom of God if we want what we want first. Ah, uh, no, I just, I want to live life my way. Go ahead, live life your way, but don't think that God is going to be with you. And that's not being mean-spirited. That's the judgment that's coming here. He's saying, you can't, you are someone that God does not want to be close to because you're you're briars, you're you're a thorn bush. Your pride in, in your sin, your confidence in your sin is going to confuse you and you're going to break that relationship with God. But not only that, you will break your relationship with your family. 
Well, my family doesn't know that my sin. Your sin will separate you from your family. To the point where he, he says that not even the, 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 uh, uh, the people in your house, not even the one in your bosom, can you trust? How, how scary is it, is it that you can't trust anyone? That's a scary feeling, isn't it? I had one instance where I felt like that. We were, this was several years, I was, I was, I was like 12 years old, 13 years old, and uh, um, a couple of my friends, we decided we were going to skip church that Sunday night. My mom wasn't there, and uh, uh, it was me and, and a couple, couple of the, the, the guys from the, the, the church there, we were going to go to the Swiss Park I was right around the corner, Mrs. Ojiga, you know where that's at, that's Swiss Park, and uh, we, we, we were going to go, they were having a, uh, it was a, a battle of the bands, we had a, we were at our own little rock band, I was the lead singer, we weren't very good, because I was the lead singer, <laughs> and it were, I was 13 at the time, and we're we're there, and uh, my friend my, my friend Jeremy's on the other side, and and we're we're we're, we're talking. We we we're getting. I, I walk by. I got I got my burgers and I got my my hot dog, and and I, I'm sitting down. And the, there's a band that's playing, and they weren't very good either. Uh, but uh, in fact, they all they cared about was the the mosh pit, and there was like a little mosh pit in the center area where they're just jumping around. It was, it was really awkward. And I sat down, and on one side, there was this kind of weird-looking old guy. Had a long beard and a bunch of piercings. And uh, uh, next to him was another weird older guy. He was bald. Had a one of those pointed goatees. Looked like it was painted on. He had all these rings on his finger. I, I remember just looking. I was I was going to go grab a bite, and I remember looking on his hands and seeing all the rings on his fingers. They're all wearing all black, head to toe. And uh, uh, I, <laughs> the good boy, I was about to pray for my meal right in the, right in there skipping church, and I I, I I did. And one of the the guys goes, uh, "How's your food?" I was like, oh, I haven't eaten it yet. And the, the band that was playing, they just ended. And the host comes on up. He goes, oh, I want to, uh, that, that was great. Uh, let's give, it a, give him a hand. He goes, I want to thank one of, the, one of the, uh, um, the people that sponsored this event. Uh, if I can have uh, 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 Mr. Mr. LeVay, if, could, could you please stand up? Anton LeVay stands on up. I had no idea who Anton LaVey was. How, how many know who Anton LaVey is? He is the, uh, I think a couple years after that, he passed away. He was the, uh, the, the founder and head of the Church of Satan. At that moment when he sat down, I looked at my food and I looked at, there were stacks, there was burgers all on, on one side of the wall, hot dogs on the other side. And my thought was thinking of Daniel chapter one. I don't know why I went to Daniel chapter one, but I just thought of Daniel chapter one as they, they were eating the king's meat that was offered to idols. And I sat there and this, I began to sweat profusely. I got really nervous. Now granted, I was 13 years old. But I began to sweat profusely, and I looked over at my friend Jeremy. I was, "Hey, can you can you take me home?" I was like, "I, I really don't want to. I, I don't want to be here right now." 
And he goes, no, man, we're, 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 we're going to be up in here in a little bit. You can't leave. And I was like, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not doing it. He's like, oh, fine, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. And he, he was, he was going to uh, take my spot. I got up. I, I, I walked from where I was all the way to the Fremont BART, took a BART home, and went home. Scared out of my mind. But in that moment, I felt like I couldn't trust anyone. I remember sitting on that BART, and as I was sitting there going home, I was looking, looking over, and there was this guy that was sitting there, and the whole time he's just staring at me. I was so nervous. It wasn't until after we got out I realized he was blind. I, I, I walk out of the BART. I'm, I'm, I'm walking home, and there's people walking behind me. And I think they're after me. So I walk a little faster. They're walking a little faster. Or so I thought. It was one of the scariest nights. Say, well, Pastor, you made it that way. I I did, definitely. Because my sin had made me feel like I couldn't trust anybody. I was perplexed. Look what he says here in verse number seven. Therefore will I look unto the Lord. Because of all that, because I know I I won't be able to trust anyone, God takes a bad situation where no one could be trusted, and he says, I can turn this good. You can trust me. There was no one over here that I can look to, that I I can find some sort of confidence in, but I can have confidence in him. And he says, therefore, while I look unto the Lord, I will wait for the God of my salvation. Notice this, my God will hear me. When it, when, when, Everything in life seems to be so confusing when, when, when it feels like nothing is going my way. Maybe it shouldn't. And maybe it needs to stop and maybe I need to stop living for myself and start living for God. He says in verse number 8, Rejoice not against me, O my enemies. When I fall, notice this, I shall arise. I love this. Hey, Christian, can I tell you something? When When God brings you down, can I tell you, you won't be left down by yourself. You'll go down by yourself, absolutely, but you won't be left down by yourself. I love this verse. He he says, "I, I, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, notice this, the Lord shall be a light unto me. Who puts me in darkness? The Lord. He's the one that perplexes me. He's the one that leads me out of the out of, out of the light. But when I get there, and when I find myself all alone, and there's nowhere to go, guess what? Oh, He turns on the light for me. He says in verse number nine, "I will bear the indignation of the Lord." He says, "I'll take my judgment. I'll take." what belongs to me. I've messed up. I've lived for myself. I've, I've went after other gods. I've sought for uh, my own gain. I, I, I have been someone that's untrustworthy. I will take the indignation. I will take the judgment on myself. But uh, why? Because I have sinned against him. Until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me. it is he will bring forth to the light and I shall behold his righteousness I'm going to suffer the judgment but guess what after that's done he's going to bring me before the light you know most oh oh, I shouldn't say most a lot of the 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 people the, the people in the Bible that we look to that have messed up had greater accomplishments after their mess-ups than before? Why? Because God doesn't care about their mess-ups? Absolutely not. It's because God is a God of restoration. Peter, 
Peter, you messed up. You, 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 you were just a mess. He was the de facto leader of the, the disciples. And inconsistent as can be. He quits on God. He quits, he, he quits on the, his calling. He quits on his purpose. And then after, Jesus restores him. He sees some of the greatest victories in his life. We find in verse 10, he says, Then she that is mine enemy shall see it, and shame shall cover which uh, said unto me, Where is the Lord thy God? Mine eyes shall behold her. Now shall she be trodden down as the mire of the streets. In the day that the walls are to be built in that day, shall the decree be far removed. In, the, in that day also he shall come even... Uh, to thee from Assyria and the fortified cities and from the fortresses even to the river and from the sea to sea and from the mountain to mountain. He says, look, oh, when after this is all done, those enemies that began to mock me and, and make fun of me as I was facing my judgment, be careful. Be careful. Because while God may judge his own, guess what? God also protects his own. I love that. I love that. It reminds me of uh, 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 years ago, I remember playing basketball, and there was, a, there was this kid who, he shouldn't have been out. He was, he was playing ball with, with all the guys, and and messing around, and his mom gets out of the car. She he, she starts yelling at him and and whatnot. She grabs him. She grabs him by the ear, and 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 she's like, "Oh, what did I tell you? I didn't tell you you could go play basketball." And she's she, go get get me in that car. And s some of the guys were making fun of him. She had every right to be judging her son. She wasn't gonna let them mess with her boy. She turned around and Mama Bear came out. And oh, I didn't even say anything and I was scared. I stood there like this. She came, what do you think? She starts, she starts yelling. She, you, you want me to start yelling at you? You ain't even my boy. I'll show you. And each one of those guys, grown guys, grown guys, each one of them. So, oh, sorry, ma'am. Sorry, ma'am. Sorry, ma'am. She can mess with her own. But guess what? No one else is. No one else is. Mrs. Catalan reminds me years ago, Miss Pilar. Uh, we were, I remember right outside of Bay Area, there was a playing area that was there. And uh, I remember uh, Luke, Luke was right, right there and Taylor, uh, Taylor Rodriguez was, was there as well. And I remember Taylor was messing with Luke and he pushed Luke. Pilar, she had, she had the, the, her little stick with her, and <laughs> she hits Taylor. Taylor. He got all shocked. Leave him alone. This was just a few minutes after she had disciplined Luke for doing something he shouldn't have been doing. No one's going to mess with her own. God says, oh, you, you, enemies of, of, of my people. Oh, watch out. Just because you think they're down, let me tell you something. As fast as they went down, I can bring them up. We move to verse number 14. Look what he says. Feed thy people with thy rod. The flock of thine heritage with the, uh, which dwells uh, solid, uh, solid, I can't even read that word. Solid, solitarily in the, the wood. Wow, that was a struggle. In the midst of uh, 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 Carmel. Let them feed in Basham and Gilead as in the days of old. According to the days of the, uh, the coming out of the land of Egypt, will I show unto them, uh, unto him marvelous things. He says, I will be your shepherd. I will feed you. I will lead you. I will guide you. I'll protect you. I will bring you to, to the, the, the best 
feeding grounds and the best uh, drinking holes. I will take care of you like you've never been taken care of before. Uh, and I, 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 we will have a relationship, and here it is, like days of old. Uh, there are people all the time, uh, I miss the good old days. I miss the good old days. Oftentimes, our good old days weren't that good. We just have rose-colored glasses about those good old days. I miss the good old days. Can I tell you some, the difference between the good old days and now? You. The good old days were good if there was any good in them because you saw them that way. God says, I will love you and take care of you like the good old days. You know, when you saw me as your shepherd. When you let me deliver you. When you let me take care of you. When you let me love you. The nation shall see the uh, and be confounded at all their might. They shall lay their hand upon their mouth. Their ears shall, shall be deaf. They shall lick the dust like a serpent. They shall move out of their holes like worms of the earth. They shall be afraid of the Lord our God and shall fear because of thee. He, basically, you know what he's saying here? He's saying, I will destroy you the same way I destroyed Satan. That, that, that phrase, uh, as a serpent, uh, with the, uh, licks the dust of his mouth. That is the same phrase that he gives to Satan in his curse. I will destroy you just like your father the devil. You know what? You know what his result, his resolve is after his confession. Verse number eighteen. Who is a God like unto thee? That's Micah's, the meaning of Micah's name right there. Who is a God like unto thee? That pardon iniquity passeth the transgression of the remnant of his heritage. He retaineth not the, uh, his anger forever. Who is a God like unto thee that when I have chosen to do wrong, you have chosen to forgive me? Who is a God like unto you that when I've transgressed your commands that you have decided to forgive me of those? Who is a God like unto you that is not going to allow your anger to remain? Why? Why do we have such a great God? Because he delighteth in mercy. God delights in mercy. You say, well, if God delights in mercy, how can we have lost uh, people that are lost and going to hell? God does not uh, delight in mercy in order to wrong his justice. Those that have chosen not to choose him still have to face, face the punishment. Oh, then if God has mercy, why do we have what's called the unpardonable sin? What is the unpardonable sin? Choosing not to believe in him. We should be glad that there's only one unpardonable sin. Why don't I feel God's mercy, some may say. I say, may we not trust in our feelings, but may we trust in God. Because His mercies are new every morning. Is there any reason for me not to give mercy? Not if we remind ourselves that God's mercy is never ending. You see, because of that, He will turn again. He will have compassion on, upon us. He will subdue our iniquities and that will cast out all their sins in the depths of the sea. 
thou wilt perform the truth to Jacob and the mercy of Abraham, which thou hast sworn unto the fathers of the days of old. You see, God will bring his judgment. But his hope is far greater than his judgment. God will bring his judgment if we seek to live our life uh, seeking for ourselves and trying to see what we can gain. What's my reward? What do I get out of it? By the way, if, if we have that, that idea of what can I get out of it, do you know what, where that comes from? Satan. That's a, that's a demonic thought. What can I gain from that? Whereas when we live spiritually, when we live in, in the love of God, it's not what can I gain, it's what can I give. Because what we gain when we give is the joy of giving. Oh, that's, that's just lame preacher talk. You've not experienced it. God will bring judgment to that. That briar of a good man who is isolated to himself because he seeks to live in his own sin and seeks to do his own way and seeks to only for himself. They, he will find himself alone and he will face the judgment by himself. He will push away his God. He will push away his friends. He will push away his family. He will push away everyone around him and be left with himself. Or we can confess and come before God and allow God to shed his light on us and bring us up and to be our shepherd and feed us, and lead us, guide us so we could see who is a God like our God. Heavenly Father, I love you and I thank you now for allowing us to go through another book Help us not to allow this to go into one ear and out the other and live our life unchanged. But Lord, I pray that you would give us the desire as well as the ability to root out the seed of wickedness. Thank you so much for those that are here, those that are watching online. I pray that you'd bless and provide to us a, a prosperous week. Bring us back to church this weekend. We love you and thank you for all that you've done in your holy name. Amen. Thank you so much for being in church. We do appreciate it. Look forward to seeing you uh, 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 Saturday for soul winning and men's, the men's barbecue at 3. I love you. God bless.